Mr. King Shin. Yeah? Is it true you think the Lord will soon return? Yes. So tell me, what work will he do when he returns? The Lord will bring us into the kingdom of heaven, of course. How will he bring us into the kingdom of heaven? Where is the kingdom of heaven? Where exactly will the Lord be taking us? When he returns, the Lord will just shh, shh, and he'll take us up into the clouds to be with him. The kingdom of heaven is in heaven, naturally. Well, I have to say, uh -huh. I don't quite agree with uh -oh. you. But why not? The Lord Jesus said, your kingdom come, your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Now you, please recite Revelation 11:15. The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. The Lord's words say quite clearly, yeah? God's kingdom will be built right here on earth. Now, do you believe that God's words will come to be? Oh, come on. Of course I do. But if God's kingdom will be built on earth, yes, where will we be lifted to? I guess I've never thought about that before. Oh, oh dear. How could you overlook such an important question? What do you mean? You're messing up something really important. <sighs> what am I messing up that's so important? I can depend on the Lord since he would never abandon me. You're always gazing at the sky, waiting for the Lord to descend. Yeah. And to whoop, lift you up into the clouds to be with him. <laughs> right, and? When they call out in the night that the bridegrooms come, if you don't go to him and you miss the chance to enter the kingdom of heaven, isn't that messing up something important? When you put it like that, I guess it really would be. The whole religious world dreams of being lifted to the kingdom of heaven. It seems you are among the few who really get it. So tell me, just how will the Lord come? What will he do when he returns? The Lord Jesus has already told us. Did he? Clearly? Listen up. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. What does sup with him mean? It means reading the word of God, hearing God's voice, and accepting the truth God expressed in the last days. Uh, is that based on the Bible? Of course it is. The Lord Jesus said, I have yet many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. However, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. The Lord really did say that. Also, there's Revelation 2.7. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. And also 1 Peter 4.17. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. These prophecies make it very clear. Yeah? The Lord will return in the last days to express truth and do the work of judgment. Ah. Do you believe that? When put like that, I'd say I do. Then let me tell you some good news. Okay. The Lord Jesus has already returned. The Lord has returned? He has returned as Almighty God to express truth and perform judgment in the last days. If we accept the judgment of Almighty God's words, huh? escape the bondage of sin and become purified, but we'll be able to enter the kingdom of heaven wait a second. and gain wait, eternal... Wait, wait. Huh? You mean us? Yeah. Us, right? Yeah. We must be judged and purified to enter the kingdom? Yes. <laughs> that can't be right. Why do you say that? Once we put our faith in the Lord, our sins were forgiven and we were saved by our faith. When the Lord comes, we'll be lifted to the kingdom of heaven without the need to be judged by God. Everything is in place. All that we need is a little luck? No. All we need is to be lifted up. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, I still do not quite agree with you. Well, why not? If one's forgiven, yes. they can enter the kingdom of heaven. That's right. Did the Lord Jesus say that? Did the Holy Spirit say that? Well, I suppose they didn't. Ah, then you ah. see my point. Consider what was said by Paul. Ah. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Doesn't this mean that by having faith and our sins forgiven, we are not condemned? So when the Lord comes, he'll bring us to the kingdom of heaven? But who is the Lord, Paul or the Lord Jesus? Oh, come on now. The Lord Jesus is the Lord. Who reigns over the kingdom of heaven, the Lord Jesus or Paul? Clearly, the Lord Jesus rules over the kingdom. Can one enter the kingdom of heaven based on the Lord's words or Paul's? Obviously based on... Uh, obviously based on the Lord Jesus' words. So you see what I mean? The Lord never said those whose sins are forgiven can enter the kingdom of heaven. 
So wouldn't you say this is a product of our imaginings? Our imaginings? Oh yes, just think. Through our faith in the Lord, our sins are forgiven. Yet we still lie in sin and we can't practice the Lord's words. Isn't that just how it is? Yes. If our sins are forgiven, does that mean we're purified? Well, no, it doesn't mean that. In the Bible it says, Holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Sinning as much as we do, do we qualify for God's kingdom? We can't enter the kingdom of heaven just because our sins have been pardoned? That's right. Having our sins forgiven means we won't be condemned by the law and put to death. It doesn't mean we're without sin, nor that we've been purified and can be brought into the kingdom of heaven. Th then just how can we enter the kingdom of heaven? We must follow the word of the Lord. Hmm, that's right. What does the Lord Jesus say in Matthew 7.21? Not everyone that said to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that does the will of my Father which is in heaven. You see? What? Just those who do God's will. Yes. Only they are able to enter the kingdom of heaven. Ah, Sounds right. Huh? We labor, work, forsake, and expend all in the Lord's name. We spread the gospel, establish churches. Isn't this all doing God's will? <laughs> She's sure confident. I have to say... I'm I... afraid I don't quite agree with you. She mimics What's me. What's wrong with what I said? Answer this. Didn't the Pharisees also travel to spread the gospel and do their work? They did. But what did they do when the Lord appeared and did his work? We all know this fact. They nailed him to the cross. So then were they in fact doing God's will? Certainly not. They were resisting the Lord. Ah, not everything qualifies as doing God's will. What are you saying? I'm saying doing God's will means practicing God's word, obeying him, living by his word no matter what the circumstances are, never sinning or resisting God. By those standards, are we doing God's will? Well, if you mean practicing God's word, submitting to God, living by his word and never... Well, then I guess not. Maybe now you'll grasp what we are, long-time believers who work hard daily, but however good we are, we keep sinning. We've suffered, we've been to jail, but all for blessings, to make a name for ourselves, to attain profit or status. We lie, we cheat, in trials we blame God, we distance ourselves from him and betray him. Based on this, can we say we're really doing God's will? It's like dressing in pictures of devils. We are covered in sin, from head to toe. Oh boy. This really isn't following God's will at all. But worst of all, even now. What? When the Lord has come to express truth and do judgment, many don't investigate. They even condemn the Lord based on their imaginings. Can people like that enter the kingdom of God? Let me ask you, we huh? pray every day to confess our sins. Hmm. Confessing and sinning, sinning and confessing. Huh. Unable to stop even though we try. That's right. But why is it that we can't escape the bondage of sin? It all comes down to one thing. What's that? We've been deeply corrupted by Satan and have sinful natures that resist God. Sinful natures? Just look at our malice and greed, arrogance and deception, self-righteousness. Who could just use willpower to suppress these satanic dispositions? Oh no, this isn't good. What is it? There's no hope for us. What can we do? Almighty God's work of judgment can resolve this. Really? I'll read from Almighty God's word and then you'll see. Great, please go ahead. Almighty God says, Though Jesus did much work among man, he only completed the redemption of all mankind and became man's sin offering. He did not rid man of his corrupt disposition. Fully saving man from the influence of Satan not only required Jesus to become the sin offering and bear the sins of man, but it also required God to do even greater work to rid man completely of his satanically corrupted disposition. God must do even greater work? Ridding man of his satanic disposition? That's right, and there's more. You ready? Yeah, yeah. You're listening? Oh, why don't you let me read? <laughs> and so, now that man has been forgiven of his sins, God has returned to the flesh to lead man into the new age and begun the work of chastisement and judgment. This work has brought man into a higher realm. All those who submit under his dominion shall enjoy higher truth and receive greater blessings. They shall truly live in the light and they shall gain the truth the way, and the life. Amen. Ah, so the Lord Jesus just did the work of redemption to forgive man of sin. But only Almighty God can remove our satanic dispositions. That's right. You really got it.
God's doing the work of judgment in the last days to purify and save man by going through the judgment of God's words. Our corrupt disposition is purified and we no longer sin or resist God. That's just wonderful. And because we grasp the truth, no matter how Satan tries to deceive us, we can see through its plots and we can stand witness for God. This is what it means to submit to and to worship God. Only thus can we enter the kingdom of heaven. Hold it. So if we just accept God's redemption, but not his judgment and purification, then we miss the most important step in our faith in God. That's right. If we can't shed our corrupt dispositions, we can be pardoned of our sin a thousand times, but we'll be denied the kingdom of heaven. You know what's happening, folks? She's getting it. <gasps> Hold on. What is it? How exactly does Almighty God use truth to judge and purify man? Almighty God's words provide a clear answer to this question. Ah, all right, then please read it. Uh-huh. You ready? Ah, there she goes again. Almighty God says, In the last days, Christ uses a variety of truths to teach man, to expose the essence of man, and to dissect the words and deeds of man. These words comprise various truths. These words are all directed at the essence of man and his corrupt disposition. Oh, now I understand. In particular, the words that expose how man spurns God are spoken in regard to how man is an embodiment of Satan and an enemy force against God. Ah, so God expresses the truth to expose man's essence and to analyze his actions. That's right, but keep listening. In undertaking his work of judgment, God does not simply make clear the nature of man with a few words. What does he do? He exposes, deals with, and prunes over the long term. These methods of exposure, dealing, and pruning cannot be substituted with ordinary words, but with the truth of which man is utterly bereft. Hmm, that makes sense. Only methods such as these can be called judgment. Only through judgment of this kind can man be subdued and thoroughly convinced into submission to God and moreover gain true knowledge of God. Ah, the words of Almighty God are so practical and no one else could express words like that. This must come from the Holy Spirit. Your intuition's on the mark. Really? After all, Almighty God is God incarnate. I knew it. Just like the Lord Jesus, his words are the expression of the Holy Spirit. Wow. So are you saying that I just heard the Lord's voice? That's correct. After years of believing, I have finally welcomed the Lord. <laughs> well, isn't she delighted? Has Almighty God said more? Almighty God has expressed so many truths. He's revealed the truth of the incarnation, the three stages of work, the root of man's sinfulness, how the devil Satan corrupts man, and in turn how God saves man, the meaning and the effects of God's work of judgment in the last days, and so much more. I've never heard any of these truths and mysteries before. And there's more. God has shown us how to attain salvation through belief in God, too. <laughs> That's a key point. Like how to shed our corrupt disposition by undergoing God's judgment, how to practice truth and honesty, and fulfill our duty to satisfy God. Like how to fear God and shun evil, how we can perform the will of God, and so much, much more. These are the truths and mysteries we must understand most. That's right. Through the judgment and chastisement of God's words, we see how deeply mankind has been corrupted by Satan, how our nature is full of satanic dispositions like greed, deception, and self-righteousness. Hmm. All that we do is for ourselves only. Uh, you're right about that. The reason most people endure suffering is to gain blessings and enter the kingdom of heaven. Yes. It's not because they love or obey God. That's true. Faced with trials, they blame God, even deny and betray him. Isn't that the truth? For instance, when some are oppressed by the CCP, they distance themselves from God. You're quite right. There are many pastors who fear CCP persecution. They aren't willing to expose the CCP's true face, which is despicable. Right again. Many of the three self-churches even raise the Chinese flag. These are compromises with Satan and betrayals of God. I ask you, without God's work of judgment in the last days, could our dispositions be purified? No, of course not. Could we stand firm through tribulation? No, we would stumble and fall. Would we be able to discern the hypocritical Pharisees? Nope, we wouldn't have a clue. Could we eschew the deception of false shepherds and antichrists? Absolutely not. Without God and his work of judgment, could man escape Satan's influence and gain salvation? No, there's just no way. That's correct. I get it. 
Almighty God's work of judgment in the last days is very meaningful. In undergoing the judgment of God's words, we can feel that God's righteous disposition can't be offended. We are able to bow before God with regret and self-loathing and repent to Him and practice truth. Unbeknownst to us, our life disposition starts to change and we start to genuinely obey God. Ah, I guess Almighty God's work of judgment really can purify and change us. The only way into the kingdom of heaven is accepting God's judgment and chastisement. I think she's got it now. Hey. Yes? Well, do you still need to wait? For what? For the religious world to accept God's judgment. Didn't you want to wait for them? No way. If I keep going with the flow, waiting for the Lord to come on a cloud, I'll be left gnashing my teeth when the great disaster comes. Ah, this time for sure. You are among the few who get it. Right.